My fellow Texans, our economy is growing. We worked very hard at making Texas very attractive. We embrace a can-do culture. We basically aren't choosing between a strong economy or a strong environment. Balance allows for new opportunities, but at the same time, allows for people to have clean air and clean water and get out and enjoy the outdoors. We lowered ozone levels by 23% between 2000 and 2011. We are a testament to the power of freedom, to the entrepreneurial spirit unleashed from government interference. The TCEQ has the largest ambient air monitoring network in the country. We collect over 7 million data points a year, and we look at that data continually, and we're always seeing improvements. The monitors that we're putting in, especially up in the Barnett Shell, take an air sample every hour, and we monitor it 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We also see that on our non-vehicle emissions of NOx, for example, we've had about a 60% reduction in the last 10 years. We are probably the leaders in the United States in using infrared technology, taking cameras in and being able to pinpoint emissions right at their source. We have 12 cameras in operation statewide right now. I don't know of any other state that is using this technology as extensively as Texas. Repeatedly, Texas comes up as a model of how to do things right. We got several requests from other states to come to their state to show them how it is that we're using that new technology. And the latest one that we went to was Puerto Rico. We have some really innovative programs. One is TERP, and that is uh, where we go in and replace old diesel engines with new ones through a grant process. Uh, this program retrofits older diesel buses. That improves the air quality right around the bus and inside the bus. It's a great example of a program that impacts the lives of people directly, especially children. And no matter how you measure it, air quality has vastly improved in Texas, even while we've had all this growth. And part of what we've seen on top of that increased growth of the number of Texans coming in is we've also seen unprecedented drought. Working with our local, state, and federal partners, we looked at how can we improve our response, provide that rapid response to different disasters or one large-scale disaster. So what we did is we rolled out the disaster response strike team concept. And that's comprised of multiple teams located throughout the state that gives us the ability to mobilize equipment and people quickly to either a large-scale disaster or even multiple disasters. We also have what amounts to a small army that goes out and helps protect the environment. We have 16 regional offices. We have over 2,700 employees. They go out and do literally thousands of investigations each year at facilities to ensure compliance with environmental regulations. So if we're going to have a regulatory structure where we have measurable environmental benefits at the end, but it's also predictable. It's not something that we change all the time. Forbes.com and CNBC has named Texas as the number one business economy in the U.S. When companies like Apple are looking to expand in a place like Texas, you know that quality of life is part of that decision. Because of the model that we've established. Being innovative, allowing for flexibility and working to find real environmental solutions. You can't help but be bullish on the future of Texas. We stand as a national example that hard work can breed success. Thank you. God bless you, and through you, may God continue to bless the great state of Texas.